<clears throat> so welcome back for the remaining part of the lecture we have already discussed uh, the basics of phylogenetics and the different methods that are used for building phylogenetic trees now we shall discuss some advantages and disadvantages of those methods and we shall use some tools to build phylogenetic trees so the maximum parsimony method chooses a tree that has the fewest evolutionary changes or shortest overall branch lengths the main advantage of maximum parsimony is that it is very simple its assumptions are easily understood in addition the character this character based method is able to provide evolutionary information about the sequence characters such as information regarding homoplasy and ancestral states it tends to produce more accurate trees than the distance based methods when sequence divergence is low however it ha also has some disadvantages uh, when sequence divergence is high or the amount of homo plasies is large tree estimation by maximum parsimony can be less effective because the original parsimony assumption no longer holds so the estimation of branch lengths may also be uh, may also be uh, how to say faulty or erroneous because uh, mp does not employ substitution models to correct the multiple substitutions in addition uh, this method only consider information or informative sites and ignores other sites consequently certain phylogenetic signals or informations may be lost so second method is uh, the maximum uh, sorry minimum evolution method or ml method uh, this method evaluate the phylogenetic hypothesis in terms of probability that a proposed model of evolutionary process and the proposed unrooted tree would give rise to the observed data the tree found to have the highest ml value is considered to be the preferred one so there are several advantages uh, for this method for example uh, ml methods are inherently uh, statistical and evolutionarily model based so there are set statistics involved it is thus considered mathematically more rigorous than maximum parsimony moreover ml uses the full sequence information uh, not just the informative sites as it was seen for the last method so usually the most consistent uh, of the available methods is this method it can be used for character can infer the exact substitution and rate analysis this method can also be used to infer the sequences of extinct or hypothetical ancestors it can also help uh, account for branch length effects in unbalanced trees this method can be applied to nucleotide or amino acid sequences and other types of data however there are some disadvantages for this method for example these methods are not as simple uh, as many other methods are these methods are computationally very intense so it limits the number of taxa and the length of sequences like parsimony uh, can be fooled by high levels of homoplasy moreover uh, there are some violations uh, or if there are some violations of assumed models it can lead to incorrect trees so next we shall discuss uh, some clustering 
so the third one is the minimum evolution method so the optimality criteria uh, is that the trees with the shortest sum of branch lengths or overall tree length is selected or uh, is said to be the best tree that must be used later on so there are some advantages of this method uh, for example it can be used on indirectly measured distances it can be corrected for unseen events and the major advantage is that they are computationally fast and are therefore capable of handling data sets that are deemed to be too large for any other phylogenetic method so these methods can be used for some rate analysis and uh, there are some disadvantages uh, for this method. For example, in information law is lost uh, when characters are transformed into distances. Moreover, it, uh, this method cannot be used for character analysis. <coughs> and this method is generally slower than some clustering methods. So let's discuss some clustering methods. <laughs> Sorry. So there are basically the basic assumption of there are two methods, UPGM and neighbor joining, which are called clustering methods. So the basic assumption of uh, UPGM method is that all taxa evolve at a constant rate and that they are equally distant from the root, implying that a molecular clock is in effect uh, i hope you have remembered the molecular clock concept so the neighbor joining method or anche method does not assume the taxa to be equidistant from the root so this is the major difference between these two methods so advantages these methods can be used on uh, indirectly measured distances and the distances can be corrected for unseen events Uh, from these methods, for example, they are fast methods like a uh, neighbor joining method is very fast. So they can, therefore, they can analyze very large data sets in the shortest possible time. These methods can be used for some types of rate and data analysis. However, there are uh, some disadvantages related to these methods. So the similarity and relationship are not necessarily the same thing. So clustering by similarity does not necessarily give an evolutionary tree. So these methods cannot be used for character analysis. Moreover, they have no explicit optimization criteria. So one cannot even know if the program worked properly to find the correct tree for the method. So the last step uh, in constructing a phylogenetic tree, as we discussed, uh, is the evaluation of uh, the phylogenetic tree that is constructed. So there are basically, after the phylogenetic tree is constructed, uh, there are two basic questions that need to be responded. Number one is how uh, reliable the tree or a portion of tree is. And the second is whether this tree is significantly better than the other tree. So to answer the first question, uh, we need to use analytically uh, or analytical resampling strategies such as uh, bootstrapping and jackknifing, uh, which repeatedly resample data from the original data sets. For the second question, uh, conventional statistical tests are needed but we I shall just give you a brief overview of the boots trap values so bootstrapping is a statistical technique uh, that tests the sampling errors of phylogenetic trees 
it does so by repeatedly sampling trees through slightly uh, disturbed or perturbed data sets. By doing so, the robustness of the original tree can be assessed. So usually uh, 1000 bootstrapping values are used and uh, to evaluate the tree if there are high boots trap percentages, for example, if it is more than 70%, it indicates uh, a statistical support for the presence of the clade. I mean, it, it says that, uh, that uh, the results are statistically correct. So let's discuss uh, some important softwares and uh, tools or websites that are used for building phylogenetic trees. So there are numerous softwares and resources for constructing a phylogenetic tree but we shall obviously we shall discuss very few of them so first of them is uh, phylogeny.fr so it is a, a a simple to use web service uh, which is dedicated uh, to reconstructing and analyzing phylogenetic relationships between molecular sequences so it includes multiple alignment uh, by using tools like muscle, tcopy, uh, cluster W, probe, cones, and performs phylogeny uh, by different methods. So let's discuss uh, how it works. It's very simple. Uh, you can just select. Uh, So there is an option to go back. So if there is an option of phylogeny analysis, you can just click here and it will open the second window, uh, which is here. One click means it's very simple. So you can just paste your sequences in faster format. Uh, here I shall use uh, the example sequences which are present at this website. So I hope you already know what is a FASTA sequence format. Uh, if uh, you don't know, maybe you can ask me uh, in our discussion. So you can add sequences here and then just click submit. It will take uh, some time, but usually very not. Uh, usually it's, uh, it takes a few minutes. So you can see it is using a maximum likelihood computation method and uh, after a few time few minutes we shall get the file genetic tree uh, for these sequences so i shall not go into the detail it's just a, a demonstration next uh, is a standalone software that you can download in your computer and uh, you can use it uh, whenever you want even if you do not have internet with you as uh, many students are facing the problem of internet usages. So hopefully you can just install in the computer and then you can carry on. So once you have installed this software, the Mega 7, there are some options for Windows. You can download it here. It's Mega X, but I have used Mega 7. So this is how it looks, the Mega seven here you can start from here if you want to construct a phylogenetic tree just click this portion the align portion and uh, it will give you an option for sequence alignment so you can select either you want to use uh, create a new alignment you have already aligned and uh, saved it or you want to retrieve sequences from some file so we shall go with the uh, creation of new alignment and then it will ask if you want to use DNA sequences uh, or protein sequences. So obviously we shall use protein sequences and uh, then uh, this window will open. You can just paste uh, the protein sequences in obviously in FASTA format in this region and uh, it will give you an output like this. So from here, uh, you will select, there are two options, 
uh, for sequence alignment. One is muscle and one is uh, cluster W. We shall use cluster W and uh, if we click this W, it will open this portion. Uh, there are several options. You can ask me uh, about these options. I shall go with default uh, parameters. And first we click it, it will take some time to perform alignment. And uh, this is just, uh, an output of uh, the aligned file. You can see there are some sequences. These regions are highly conserved, means they are present in all the sequences. And uh, there are, for example, this region is very conserved. Although there is a sequence uh, which is not highly conserved in this region, the so GYGD is a motif which is important for potassium uh, transport proteins. So, if this motif is disturbed, uh, it means the protein will be unable to perform its function of uh, potassium transport. So, here we can eliminate this sequence from this alignment. And this option was not available in uh, online trees or online tree building methods. So if we remove this uh, sequence, which is here, now we have all the sequences which have uh, conserved the GYGD motif. Now you can use these sequences for tree building. So, so there is an other option. If you click on the data, there is phylogenetic analysis, you will click uh, this tab and all these alignment will be transferred uh, to the phylogenetic portion uh, of this tool. So once you have clicked the phylogenetic analysis, uh, then you will go to the phylogeny portion. There are options for maximum likelihood, neighbor joining, uh, minimum evolution, and there are other methods. So I will just do a simple uh, phylogenetic tree construction using neighbor joining method because it is uh, fast and it obviously it has some advantages or disadvantages that we have discussed. So once you click a neighbor joining method it will open a window. This one there are, you can see the bootstrap values I have selected 1000 uh, bootstrap values for the neighbor joining method. Uh, it is the model of evolution and uh, if you just click compute, it will start computing phylogenetic tree. It takes uh, some few minutes and uh, later on you will get a phylogenetic tree maybe in this form. There are several options uh, to customize this tree or to edit this tree and uh, you can uh, go on and search for the options. Obviously, I am always there for your help if you have any questions. So the third one is the third software which is available online. It is IQ Tree. Uh, I find it more useful as compared to the first two methods or first two softwares that we have used. Uh, so for IQ Tree, uh, you just upload an alignment here. Uh, you can perform alignment um, uh, using any software. So I will use only uh, the example file, which is here. So I shall check on, I shall ask the software to use example file or example alignment. So this software is also very easy to use. You have just uploaded your alignment, then uh, you will click the submission button, which is, I think, at the end of this window. You can scroll down. A job is successfully submitted, and after some time, you will get uh, this tree in this form, which is obviously uh, it does not look good. So you can copy this tree in, in, in for example, in Navic format, which is one of the formats for phylogenetic trees and uh, you can save it this navic format you can use mega software to open this phylogenetic tree or there is another tool which i use uh, normally the itol or interactive tree of life software so it is very simple you just click uh, the 
upload option and it will ask you about some information you give your name you put uh, the text here for the navic parameter of phylogenetic tree or you can upload a file here just click upload and uh, it will give you uh, the tree uh, phylogenetic tree you can see here that this tree represents uh, the relationship of uh, some animals now you can use these options to customize or change the outlook of this tree uh, that could be used in publications uh, for example if you click right click here at humans uh, it will open a small window uh, like this if i yes so here you can just edit the color style label of uh, this one uh, for example i have changed the color of uh, this portion so now you can see uh, the humans have highlighted so you just can visualize it easily uh, there are some other options for example you can if you want you can use the unrooted tree and if you click the unrooted it will convert uh, this form of tree into an unrooted phylogenetic tree there is another option for uh, how to say circular tree you can convert it in its circular form and then you can export uh, this figure or uh, tree uh, in a very high resolution uh, figure which is generally used in publications uh, so i think that's all for phylogenetic methods i hope you have several questions and you will ask me these questions in our discussion uh, thank you very much you can use uh, this book essential bioinformatics uh, for reading and i have tried to follow this book so that you can get uh, enough uh, uh, literature uh, to follow this presentation and uh, there are uh, some other books but i think it's uh, that will be enough for you okay. thank you